I am tired as a brown person uh -huh. of having to defend white people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure I have to def well, I'd like you to elaborate if you okay. might. <laughs> yeah. Please. Um, so there's been this trend of like saying like in in the same way the well not just people have been saying oh white people always do this and just uh, -huh. uh oh these old white people or whatever uh throw everything and while yes it is old white people making shit terrible it is white people that have done a lot of the bad things mm -hmm. or you know white cops or uh -huh. blah 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 um it's not their whiteness that has made them do these bad things. Uh -huh. And so in the same way, like I think reverse racism is just racism. Like, I agree with that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so people go in, Oh, all white people suck. Like, no, that's pretty freaking racist. Yeah. <laughs> I would not say that. Um, there are definitely extremists in all races, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't, I do believe that there is a privilege to being white. Yes. There definitely is. Mm -hmm. Um, fortunately I am blessed with many people around me who recognize their mm -hmm. privilege and mm -hmm. use it for good because yeah. I mean, you can go either way once you have that knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. But no, I would never use a blanket statement and say all white people are this, all black people are that, because right. I mean, I have fallen victim to that, you know, mm -hmm. why do black people do this? Well, why do you ask dumb shit? You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I can't answer Ooh. that. Yeah. That, that's yeah. <laughs> the heat expanded. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, but no, I would never use a, I, well, I try not to use blanket statements like mm -hmm. that. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, so, but like it, it upsets me in in the I I have strong principles, mm -hmm. and so if if we're gonna be like, hey, everyone is equal, everyone is, you know, everyone has the potential to be great people, and yeah. Also has the potential to be terrible people, yeah. Um, yeah. But like, if that's the case, then don't say stuff like, uh, "There's a um, a writer that got hired by I think the New York Times uh -huh. and her her Twitter, she's Asian. Her Twitter is just like the tears of white women make me happy. And she's oh. like, damn. Oh, like, okay. how do you get hired by the New York Times yeah. saying actually racist things? Wow. <laughs> Maybe you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know, and it's it's interesting, but I mean, one thing with that, I don't know this person or I don't know that statement that was made or I hadn't read it, but mm. there is a possibility that they don't view that particular statement as racist. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But then there is the, I guess, the idea that New York Times is such a quote unquote liberal paper right, right. that if... The, it maybe they just looked at that as a dissenting opinion or maybe it's you know kind of like what's his name the combs guy for fox or something like that they need to they need to have one or something right, I, don't, right. I don't i don't know i mean yeah, yeah. i really don't know but i had not heard that mm. you know so i mean it's it's stuff like that that and it it starts out subtle right in mm. the same way that normal racism starts subtle and normal racism has been resurfacing <laughs> yeah. as very subtle um and I think it's a little bit more blatant. Right. Well, maybe. Lately, it's becoming yes. a lot more blatant. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it started out as just like, ha ha, white people surfing, get it? Uh, but like, <laughs> <laughs> or I don't, I don't know, but like now it's just becoming like, oh, white people, uh, it'll be great whenever they're all dead. Ha ha ha. And I was like, whoa. That jeez, I who are you listening to? I mean, uh, you know, I, that's I would, yeah. I'm curious who <laughs> who are making these statements. I mean, it's like that is the most extremes of the things that I've been seeing. Yeah, but at the same time, I've also been seeing a lot of people agreeing with it, mm -hmm. and so it's 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 also the people not necessarily on the farthest extremes, uh -huh. but just the people that are kind of close to it, that they don't necessarily have to say the things to like encourage it. 
Mm-hmm. And and so it's like, ah, screw all white people. And some people are like, kind of in the back of their mind are like, yeah, screw all white people. And that's how it, I think that's how it started with like the alt-right too. And this is something that I was noticing like even before the alt-right was like a thing. Uh-huh. Um, whenever they were being like, ha ha ha, if the left hates uh, Nazis so much, then we'll just like take that joke and just like run with it. Um, and that's, that's how it started really is it, it was just kind of a joke. It's just, Oh, you think that anything that says something even remotely conservative is Nazis. So we're just going to be like, sure. Burn the Jews. I uh, sure hope not. God. Right. And, but the thing is, is that what happened while there were some people on the internet, that are just edgy and they're just like, ha ha ha. It's funny. I don't actually want to burn all the Jews. It's just like, it's funny to like, trigger people because they're annoying but then you get the people eking out of the the oozing out of the walls mm-hmm. and being like yes actually burn all the jews crawling out of the woodwork yeah right. um and but then the more that they say it the more it starts becoming a little bit more true a little bit more self-fulfilling prophecy and it's like yeah, maybe black people are inferior to white people. And then they just like, it started becoming a real thing. Oh, yeah. And that's why it's astounding to see Charlottesville and go, these people are out in public in, why? <laughs> well, because they have a representative. Right. They're they're here. Mm-hmm. They've always been here. Yeah. It's just now they... Mm-hmm. have someone yes you know and to uh to solidify the stereotypes and to perpetuate the stereotypes mm-hmm. you know and you know i i'm really apprehensive about there are certain it goes back into the media and journalism there's mm-hmm. a difference between legitimate journalism and just trying to uh cash in mm-hmm. you know you need to know the whole story but First of all, I don't believe that racism is racism. It, mm-hmm. I don't believe in anything reverse racism. Secondly, um, there have been there's been so many things. There's so many f- flashpoints or just points that are you know cause these racial tensions. Mm-hmm. You know, if people want to talk about affirmative action or you know that that's one thing that's so hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm the, still weird with um, affirmative action. Actually, well, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I see. Me being a black person, I don't necessarily, you know, my resume speaks for itself. My my transcript speaks for mm-hmm. itself. You know what I'm saying? So I've not asked. I'm not asked. I don't need anyone right. to ask to let me into a program because um, I'm black or something like that. Mm-hmm. My stuff speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. However, the way I interpret that is when there is not enough diversity in a place, mm-hmm. purposely, mm-hmm. we have to look at that. Right. Be it. Why are there only, why are there no women here? Mm -hmm. You know, why are there no people of color here? Right. You know, that, Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that you have to hire just because someone is brown, Mm -hmm. black, or whatever. Mm -hmm. If they're qualified and they happen to be brown, black, and whatever, hire them. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not saying I'm looking for a handout. I've never looked for a handout. Right. So, I'm not going to go ahead and talk shit about people who don't know me mm-hmm. or whatever, because people can uh, talk all they want to mm-hmm. about me and um, assume this, that, and a third. But if mm-hmm. they haven't sat and discussed things with me, right. they don't know. Right. So that's why I don't deal with the rhetoric and all that stuff and go to the side. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel about that. Right. And But that's the distinction. I'm glad you you made that very clear in that there's a difference between like giving someone a handout Mm -hmm. and just asking the question Mm -hmm. and going, you don't necessarily have to go, Oh, why are there no women here? Therefore hire more women. That's not necessarily the conclusion that you have to arrive at. Right. It's just, why are there no women here? We need to look at this. Yeah. Yes. And, and the more that we look at it, the more that, that becomes clear, but yes, first is that willingness to look at it. I mean, <laughs> it, the times are ever changing, so it, nothing stays the same, and we're all just un- apprehensive to change. So, mm-hmm. but it's inevitable, right? Right, Seriously, right. So, um, but I also try and 
go the opposite direction and go, it's like, I'm seeing this it's even more mild than the like call white people thing is, is more of like uh, white people being guilty for being white and saying like, oh, I'm sorry for like, you know, I, I'm white and so I have all this privilege. And it's like, you don't have to apologize to me for your privilege. Just like acknowledge that it's there and behave accordingly. But you don't have to be like, oh, like, you know, we've done so many bad things to you. Like, I don't want your apology. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not asking for any type of apology like that. But as a, once again, as a black person in America, I am aware of some of the sins of their fathers and mothers mm -hmm. and their grandfathers and mothers and what they did to my grandfathers and mm -hmm. grandmothers and so on and so forth. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm harboring any malicious intent. Right. But we have to recognize the sins of the past exactly. and address that if we are to build on a foundation. You can't build a house on a crappy foundation. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to communicate and we have to discuss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm not going to fault you or anyone else mm -hmm. because your great grandpappy lynched this person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't cool, obviously. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, But I'm not going to go ahead and say this, that, and a third. But at the same time, then we have the arguments of appropriation, cultural appropriation, which mm -hmm. I kind of like to talk, I say it's misappropriation, but sure. anyway, that's something else. You know, I'm not gonna, it is a little irking to sure. me when sometimes you'll hear people just kind of walk past talking about, you right, you right, and it's just like, that's when I feel me and my culture have, for lack of a better phrase, become a novelty. Sure. You understand? And that's when problems occur. Mm-hmm. Eric B. and Rakim came out with the song as a kid for me. I ain't no joke. Mm. All right. And that's how I'm not a, <laughs> I ain't no joke. I'm not a novelty. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? If that's part of your culture, that's who you are. Represent. Mm -hmm. But to hear everyone like, anybody got time for that or something like that, something stupid. It's just like, it's, just, it's almost insulting to me, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of how I feel about that. Right. Yeah. And I, I do like making clear the distinction between like, political action mm -hmm. and like cultural or mm -hmm. social action yeah and so uh kind of like regarding the the me too thing for example like a lot of the things that have happened a lot of the repercussions that has happened mm -hmm. to all the people that have been outed as, as mm -hmm. you know assaulters or whatever yeah. Maybe not a lot of legal action can necessarily happen, but socially there's a lot of repercussions. And yes. so, yeah, you you can't arrest someone for maybe you can't arrest someone for like a a, a snide sexual comment or whatever, but like you can definitely be like that dude's pervert, and we're not <laughs> going to talk to him or we're going to you know. Um, and so there is a, a clear distinction between political action and social action um and so i i do have a a weird idea of the 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 cultural uh i guess focus in that maybe it's because i don't have that much of my identity that is influenced necessarily by my race mm. um in the yeah, I was born in Venezuela, mm -hmm. um, but I came here in 2001. I was six. Okay. And so for all intents and purposes, I, I'm essentially a American. Right. Um, and while, like, yeah, I speak Spanish and, like, yeah, there are certain foods that uh, that my family makes that are different <laughs> or certain for you sure, know, yeah. uh, values or yeah. stuff like that, yeah. that doesn't necessarily define Santiago Ramones is just kind of a, a part of the whole of thing. Course, of and course. And so if um if some someone of not Venezuelan heritage goes, I want to try and make some arepas, which is like a kind of food that we make. Okay. I'm not gonna be like, whoa, slow down there. That's cultural appropriation. Right. If, like, go for it. And it's like, I'm gonna try and put, you know, sugar in the mix i'll be like all right that's a little weird mm -hmm. but like 
go for it, I guess. It's your version <laughs> of our thing. And that's that's kind of how like the, the melting pot yeah. happens anyway. That's and true. so yeah. I mean, New Orleans is like a great example of here's French people and black people and here's yeah. Dutch and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. it's they took all the different cultures and slammed them together and now you have a different thing that's yeah. now New Orleans. Yeah. Um and so the the pushback with cultural appropriation seems a little strange to me because it's like, well, they're just, uh, and yes, misappropriation is the problem. Yes. Uh, but like pushing back against, I don't necessarily see the problem if like, oh, white people can't have dreads. I was like, no, uh, I'd never say that. Right, right. Exactly. No. Um, it's, I mean, it's just. One is just a hairstyle, so well, like leave it alone. But I like, would actually disagree with that statement okay. because there is I don't have a problem with anyone white having dreads, mm-hmm. but the true definition of the dreadlocks has definitely been lost when you talk about Rastafarianism and how it came out of Jamaica in the nineteen thirties and mm. whatnot. Because the Rasta, mm. you know, for a long time was hated people in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. You know, they it wasn't until the late 60s, early 70s, maybe, mm. that Rastas were more accepted culturally, socially. Mm. You understand? But dreads are a symbol of the... the um, casting away or kind of disowning uh, working for someone else. You know, you... You, you're learning Rastafarianism really has to go. There are cer- certain characters or certain mm-hmm. people within. You, you talk about Marcus Garvey, who mm-hmm. prophesized that there would be a black king in Africa who mm-hmm. ended up being Haile Selassie, king mm-hmm. of Ethiopia. Okay, so when he was crowned, he was envisioned as the person, Selassie. Mm-hmm. I. That's where you get the I and I from. Mm-hmm. I and I. <laughs> okay, but being a Rastafarian. I'm not Rastafarian, you know, mm-hmm. but these are things that my father, even though he was christened as Catholic, he still has these teachings. And this was all these musics that were playing, Burning Spear, Marley, mm-hmm. you know, culture. These are roots reggae artists, mm-hmm. uh, Mighty Diamonds. But to be a true Rasta, you, you didn't work for anyone else. Mm-hmm. You worked off the land. Mm. the dreads were a symbol of your casting away of the establishment. So that's mm. why in a lot of Roots music, you'll hear people say ball heads versus the dreads because mm. the ball, the shaved head, mm. that's the clean heads, that's the conformity. Mm-hmm. The ball head is the s- symbol of conformity. Mm. Um, and if there is a true uh, Rasta who is disagreeing with me, I'm not, so I understand, give me some, give me some knowledge, <laughs> you understand? But from what I'm taking mm-hmm. on reading about Marcus Garvey and his prophecies and knowing about Haile Selassie and the things that mm. my father's taught me and coming from the music. That's what the dread symbolized. Mm. You know, you use your you use your resources, mm. you know, you grow your own food. Yeah. You're not working for someone else. So mm. in that when it becomes a novelty and it's just this cool hairstyle, then maybe yeah, okay. it's just like that's right. kind of wrong. But no, I would never say. Right. No. Well, that's that's actually a really cool way of what just happened mm-hmm. was how you make that less of a problem. If I made a mistake in saying just a hairstyle, and you were like, "Well, no, actually, there's a lot to this." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah, my bad." No, you're good. <laughs> no, and it wasn't even animosity. I right, was just exactly. saying, you know, I know this piece of information. Yeah, exactly. So, and I don't represent it, even though I have a. I'm I'm Jamaican. I'm Jamaican, for lack of a better word. <laughs> That's what I, how I recognize. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not a Rasta. I'm mm-hmm. not. You know. So I don't represent, but I have respect for. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, that's mm-hmm. that's me. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it comes down to intent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, if mm-hmm. someone intends to go, ooh, I want to get dreadlocks because uh, I think black people look cool with it and I want to <laughs> try it, that's a eh. kind of slimy intent there. Yeah. Uh, I guess <laughs> you know I don't want to knock someone, but I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess I get. <laughs> uh, but if you go like, oh wow, I really like respect this culture, and yeah. uh, I want to get into it. So like, Eminem mm-hmm. 
being as famous for rap as he is, mm-hmm. he did it right. Mm-hmm. He took the time to like, no, mm-hmm. I've listened to all this music. I I know what all this is about. And I've had a similar experience to this. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you about that. And it's like, you can look at Eminem. He's not appropriating no. anything. And that's exactly, he's the perfect, ex- when I use the term misappropriation, he was the perfect example of what I was mm. talking about. No one, I would never look at him and say, oh, well, he's not authentic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's, yeah. it's not appropriating to him. It's mm. not, or misappropriating to him. That's who he is. In yeah. my eyes, I don't know him. You know sure. what I'm saying? But, <laughs> <laughs> but he is the perfect example of that. So I'm glad you brought him up. Right. Oh, uh, <laughs> Maybe maybe somewhere behind a closed door, Eminem like buttons up his shirt and he's like, "Oh well, finally I've gotten all that money from that <laughs> rapping music." <laughs> uh, <laughs> he may hear it. <laughs> Look, I ain't trying to get in nobody's lyrics or nothing like that. I'm not. I'm just shooting shots or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't. <laughs> too bougie for that. Come on now, y'all. <laughs> right. Um, but. Even still, like I wouldn't see uh, someone going, "Ooh, arepas." Let me put something weird in there that I like. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily see that as misappropriation if the intent is, uh, "Well, I like this thing. I want to try something yeah. with it that I like." Okay. Instead of going like, "Ooh, Venezuelan. That's a buzzword. Let me just." grab onto that and like hey look this is a thing that this culture does oh i see what you're saying right oh yes um, <laughs> i hear you i made this for you because that yeah i see you. yeah i see what you're saying okay. and so uh i wanted to take the 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 like snl black panther jokes like get uh. your uh unseasoned potato salad with raisins out of here oh. like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've I've never. Ex- it's such a, you know, it's such a fine line, mm-hmm. you know. Like, a, growing up in New York, I never really had to. I, yeah, yeah, I had to think about it. You know, growing mm-hmm. up in Brooklyn and Staten Island, yeah, you think about it, but it just seems so much more apparent now, mm-hmm. and that's just dumbfounding to me. It really is, but mm-hmm. but not hundred percent because we know what's happening. We know what's happened, and. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do find it difficult to navigate that sort of like purism sort of thing in that like um I don't know if how do you make new strides in culture and sort of blend the things without sort of getting attacked for lack of a better word mm. uh, for like appropriating or misappropriating or whatever it might be. You have to be genuine, I would assume. Mm. You know, I mean, but that's what makes America. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say, yeah. I mean, <laughs> truly, though, okay, yes. what really makes America great is the mul- the many cultures we have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I, I just can't, there just seems to be this, this isolation movement that's going on. Mm. It's like, it, it's almost like the whole. 50s or the pre 1960s ideas of quote unquote not mixing the races and mm-hmm. blah 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 and I, I I just don't understand it I really don't understand it but I mean if I don't know how we grow without lis- without genuinely listening mm-hmm. there's a difference between between hearing someone talk and truly listening right and that's probably a big tr- that mentally that's a trigger for me mm. if i feel like i'm not being heard if i'm not being listened to genuinely so i was just waiting for you to finish yeah. so that they can say their next thing you know yeah mm. it, i'm done because mm. there's no there's no reasoning mm. literally if you are unreasonable not in the the contemporary sense where you're being mean as unreasonable but if you are literally unable to reason it's mm-hmm. almost a moot point yeah i feel to sit and discuss but then the flip side to that is well how do we understand each other without the discussion mm-hmm. so it's a it, it's kind of a double-edged sword you know it's yeah but i mean sometimes it's fatiguing yeah and it's like if i, I get tired of having to explain things right. or having to deal with assumptions you mm-hmm. know a couple weeks ago uh, i'm not gonna drop any names but <laughs> um 
you know, there was a former employer of mine who made a comment and asked me if I could floss the dance. Hmm. Like, no, I'm, I don't do that. And someone was like, well, his skin is a little darker than mine. So I'm, just, I'm like, are, are you serious? You know, so yeah. it's like the fact that I, it's right. just it's fatiguing in those sure. moments, you know. But um, at the same time, we don't we don't want to mistake ignorance for malice. Right. Um, I know so, it's not malicious. Yeah, yeah. I know that wasn't. Yeah. But it's just it's, like. It is definitely ignorant. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but and, and at the same time, it's not it's not necessarily bad to be ignorant. It's bad to want to remain ignorant. True. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unreasonable. It's, yeah. Yes. And so it's like, oh, do you know how to do this dance? You're black. You know dance, right? Yeah, like, uh, 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 okay. No, what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and maybe they had pure intent in that and they're like oh dance yes uh like, mm. and it's like, no that's not how that works yes. it's like, and oh. it's oh oh crap i just offended you that that was really bad of me i'm sorry yeah. and if, if that comes across then it's like all right you're good now you know yes like don't just ask black people if they could dance. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And I'm apprehensive sometimes about even using the word offensive because I feel like it lo- it's losing its meaning. Yes. You know, it's not necessarily that that situation was offensive mm. m- much as much as it was the PR in me wanted to say, ooh, please don't let don't do that right. with anyone else. You right. know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm your friend. <laughs> yeah. So don't say that to anyone else because mm. you never know. Which going back to the young lady who I mentioned earlier with mm-hmm. the drink. That's something I conveyed. It was like, yes, just because your people are cool with that doesn't mean that everyone else is. You mm-hmm. got to be careful. You right. Got to be careful with who you're yeah. with. You know, when we're playing, it's cool. You know, if you if when you know somebody like that, then it's different. But if you don't mm-hmm. know me like that, mm-hmm. there could be a problem. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> and and it does have a lot to do with like knowing people. Yeah. Because I feel like uh, I was once. I can't remember the artist who they were setting up for, so I can't actually, uh, <laughs> actually I do remember the artist, so I just won't say. Okay. Uh, but uh, I was working at Tower Theater for a little bit, okay. and um, I was helping uh, this crew unload mm-hmm. uh, all their gear from their tour. Um, and so this this pretty conservative older gentleman was like, uh, you know, kind of ranting on about uh, liberals these days oh, or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. um, and kind of talking about oh like trans is just kind of a weird thing that they just don't want to decide on the blah and mm. I was like mm. why? look you don't know anyone trans it seems <laughs> or you don't know or if you do know someone trans you don't know them well enough to know how this is for them yes so just you understand respect and we we got into like a, a big thing about respect and blah 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 and okay. so i was like all right so if you respect someone just use the pronoun that they asked you to yeah <laughs> yeah for sure um so i mean like hey i don't i wouldn't like it if you called me bitch <laughs> so don't refer to me as that and it's, cool thanks for respecting me enough to refer to me in the way that i would like to be you know i've been called a bitch <laughs> you know, but like i said it depends on how well you know me you know what I'm <laughs> so you can call me bitch all you want to but i hear what you're saying yeah yeah for sure and so it's it's more about respect and intent mm-hmm. rather than but but that's the thing is if they don't know anyone or know anyone well enough yeah. to to go to know that this is a problem, then because then it just becomes the excuse, kind of like that that girl at the bar. It's yeah. like <sighs> I have black friends, yes, so I can do this. Yes. It's, oh, I have gay friends, so I can say this. No. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I mean, it, and it's. Like I said, I'm in an interesting place being openly gay, being black, being first generation American, because, you know, in certain instances, you know, yeah, a Caucasian may assume this one thing about me, but even in the black American community, it's like there's this, for some, there's this idea of quote unquote talking white. 
Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, why you talk white? And it's like, wh- what does that mean? I understand what you're what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I need you to elaborate for me. You know, mm-hmm. but and that's kind of reciprocating a level of ignorance as well. Yes. You know, and that's uh, something I feel very strongly about as well. Mm-hmm. But then also even being openly gay. Oh, well, you you know this that and the third and or or it's like you two are gay. Why don't you guys get together, bitch? Because I don't know him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, <laughs> this isn't a desert island. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And when I say bitch, I don't like mean like you know. That's <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know these are the, you know anyway. Right. Well, and that's the thing is that uh, like talking white, for example. Yes. It's. I mean, why is why do you perceive talking white to be a bad thing per se? It's. <laughs> I know what the answer to that is, what their answer to that is, mm-hmm. but that's not a thing. Being art- Articulating what you're saying for me, even though I have a bit of a New York accent and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've taken several diction classes and studied several languages, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, I mean, I've just always tried to articulate what I have, you know, or my voice. So I get that. I get what they're saying, mm-hmm. you know, but whether they're playing or not, that's one thing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um. But it happens. It it does happen. But I can remember a time being at UCO in the uh, concert corral, mm-hmm. my first semester, my first year, or second, my first year, second or first semester, mm-hmm. and I said something, and there was a gentleman in the choir who said something. Well, why are you why are you saying it like that? Why are, why aren't you saying it black? And then my homeboy laid into him (laughs) needless to say that person was not back in the choir after that i mean i didn't make a big deal out of that sure sure i was just like okay that's the type of ignorance i'm talking about Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so that it it is what it is and you gotta leave that alone i mean you can try to convey what you're conveying but at the end of the day if they're not receptive to it it's a Mm -hmm. moot point and that's where the word unreasonable or being reasonable Mm come those come back in yeah yeah i'm saying so but i mean and and kind of going back to the original, like yeah, <laughs> um, kind of like I'm I'm having to defend white people per se. Uh, I uh, I like tried once just to go because I I did see some someone say on Instagram or something like oh something about all white people and then like oh Jesus. So just a global thing. And I was like, that's pretty racist. Yeah. And so someone responded very heated, like, oh, like you can't be racist against uh, white people, blah, blah, blah. Bye. And I was like, you don't even want to have a conversation. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and at the same time, like you can see that my name is Santiago Ramones I mean... on my profile. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, for real, all right? <laughs> so it's not like I'm just a white dude over here be like, oh, white people are being mistreated. Like, <laughs> no, I'm just over here being like, that sounds pretty racist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. I just, <laughs> you know, but then uh, I feel like some of these, what we're facing today is because a lot of those stereotypes are being perpetuated mm-hmm. in certain media outlets in cer- but not just media outlets, but even in artistic outlets, like the way uh, black people are portrayed in movies on television. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, you know, when I was a kid, um, you had a lot of black television, you had mm-hmm. Cosby show, you had a different world. You had, there was always black programming mm-hmm. today. We don't have that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, there were certain images that were portrayed during that time. There were certain things, you know, certain topics that we faced de- mm-hmm. depending on the show. You know what I mean? It seems that that, that has been lost along the way and the stereotypes are just being per- perpetuated. And mm-hmm. then these buzz phrases, these catchphrases are just kind of how people get to know people of color or, mm-hmm. how, you know, yeah, they yeah. learn about the characters they see on television in the news. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I mean, instead of knowing the people, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that kind of, that, 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 that that's heartbreaking to me because yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I would categorize myself as an emotional person, you know what I mean? But I am not <laughs> one to, uh, hold my tongue, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I'm not going to make anyone feel bad, but you got to talk. Right. You know? Well, I think maybe that 
that sort of like representation sort of thing uh kind of comes out of a lack of um not not so much a lack but it was sort of a half step in that maybe after a while people were like oh maybe we shouldn't just distinguish like black television and white television let's just make it everything television Mm -hmm. and like while that makes sense uh at the same time just kind of striking it all and not pointing out the differences anyways and so just like oh here's here's a hispanic family show Mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the fact that they're hispanic it's just like a family show and it's like well sure but the hispanic thing is going to come in there eventually because it it's going to be a factor yeah and (laughs) i feel it should Mm -hmm. because i mean Not that we shouldn't embrace other cultures, but I feel a sense of pride Mm -hmm. having Jamaican parents and being Jamaican. Right. You know, I don't necessarily want, even though they may, even though Jamaica may not want me, I still want Jamaica. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so I I don't want to leave that. I don't want to leave that part because I love that part of my identity. I do, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, I mean, yeah, I guess you can, I I like how you said that, you know, you just want to be a family. You don't want to necessarily be. Like, I just want to be Troy. I don't necessarily want to be the black singer or something right, like that. Right, you know, yeah. I hear what you're saying on that. Mm-hmm. You know, when do I just get to be me? And I've asked mm-hmm. that question. Yeah. It's like, when do I stop getting to be this, that, and the other thing, this, that, and the third? And when do I just get to be Troy Anthony Small? Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard, though. Yeah. It's a little from column A, a little from column B. You know? Right. So. And and it's weird because it's, it's a dissonance, too, because if if you try and strike the, like, everyone's the same thing yeah. without addressing the initial issues that cause the differences to begin with then you know exactly we're not at the point yet that everyone is so equal no at face value right and so yeah we are going to notice whenever like in fact the marnie what i was watching earlier today uh-huh. uh the main character was played by a white woman uh-huh. uh and then there were scenes where they showed her mother mm-hmm. who was played by a, uh, a, uh, I can't, I think she was black. Uh, but so it's like, you do want to go like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't just do that necessarily because your brain is going to notice. Oh, but you can. Right. You yes. can. Yes. And so you're able to like suspend your disbelief and go, this is an opera. Yes. And th- they cast characters. Yes. Um, yes. But yeah, if we still have that little thing dangling in, in the back of our minds, it's like, her mom can't be black if she's <laughs> white. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm sure there are genetically, you know, genetic probability, there's one out of every something that could happen. Right. And that's even more <laughs> difficult if you try to justify right. it. Right, yeah, seriously. <laughs> I like your, exp- you know, I as, as someone who's performed in opera, I've been fortunate enough to play, one, one of my characters was Grandpa Moss in Aaron Copeland's The Tenderland, and mm. my I, I, my granddaughter who sang Lori, um, her name Jessica Adkins, she is Caucasian. So mm. it was kind of an interesting mashup, you know, it was a very diverse cast. Right. So, I mean, that happens in opera, but I hear what you're saying. Particularly, it's, it's harder yeah. to explain. But I will say, you know, with a little bit of commercials and advertising I've seen, I'm seeing a lot more... Uh, interracial families and a lot of more multicultural families mm-hmm. which is kind of cool to me that's really cool to me. Yeah. yeah yeah but like first we have to whenever people say like oh i don't see color oh come like on. come on <laughs> come on that's that that yeah that's that's you trying to convince me right that's you're trying to convince yourself and that, mm-hmm. whatever <laughs> and so first we have to actually make the thing equal before mm-hmm. we can not see color mm-hmm. uh because yeah there's still going to be that thing it's like her mom can't be black. She's white. <laughs> and and if just at first everyone's equal and go, we have a diverse cast and they're all characters. Cool. And but that's the thing. We're we're not equal yet. Mm-hmm. And so uh I was listening to a podcast before coming here that they were talking about like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if like Idris Elba was the next James Bond? Okay. But at the same time, right now, if the things that James Bond does Mm -hmm. would be very, like, there's a lot of tension. And so 
James Bond in a movie sees a guy, oh, I need that disguise, takes him to the bathroom, beats him up, and then takes a suit. And it's one thing for white British James Bond to do that, but for a black James Bond to take a guy into the bathroom, beat him up, and take his outfit is still has a lot of tension hmm. nowadays. Hmm. <laughs> because because may... white people will go, like racist white people will go, oh, look, just a black dude beating people up. And it's like, gosh, dang it. Mm-hmm. We can't we can't do this yet because people are still too racist to let that slide. Well, there's no pleasing everyone, right? Right. I mean, <laughs> there are just those who are that ignorant who are going to say something dumb like that. But I mm. hear what you're saying. Yeah. You know, but there comes a point where it's just it's hard because mm. you want to you want to talk about it. You want to address it with these folks. Mm. But some of them aren't receptive and mm. it's fatiguing. Yeah. <laughs> physically, mentally, mm-hmm. it's hard, you know. I mean, I can't even imagine. You know, I uh Chris Prather, I did an mm. interview with him a while back and one of the things I said about me is that it's not lo- my quote unquote privilege is not lost. Hmm. It's not lost upon me that I have an even diction. It's not lost mm-hmm. upon me that my name is Troy. Hmm. You know, it's not lost upon me that I live in the Paseo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, but I didn't always live here. You know, I grew up in New York City. Mm-hmm. But my, if you want to category, if you want to say that I'm privileged in some way, shape, or form, I'll own that. You know, mm-hmm. but I still. The black don't wash off. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I'm privileged to a point until it's t- until I'm black to a point. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. The mm-hmm. second I speak my mind, the second I argue with someone, oh, angry black guy. Mm-hmm. There he is. Mm-hmm. There he is. <laughs> There's the real Troy. You right. know what I mean? So it's there's just some people you're just not going to please, mm-hmm. and they're just people who think they know you when they don't, and don't really care to know you. So I'm like, all right. At the end of the day, right. you gotta let them go. Yeah. Right. And and at the same time, like I acknowledge my privilege and that I'm essentially white. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not a trace of an accent on me. Uh-huh. Um, and aside from my name, mm-hmm. I'm passable white. <laughs> um and I haven't I literally have not had any experience where my race has caused me to be treated differently. Glad um, to hear that. I'm yeah, I I've been lucky in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um but like I acknowledge that that's not the case for everyone. No. And there is a point where it does catch up to me and it goes like I didn't vote in this election. Why didn't I vote? Cuz I'm not a citizen. That's why I can't vote. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Why am I not a citizen? Because it's very difficult to do so. Yeah. Uh yeah. <laughs> um so like, like you said, it catches up. Yeah. Uh, and so I may be, you know, essentially like 90% white culturally, mm-hmm. but then that last little thing, like my driver's license still says temporary on it. Okay. Like, <laughs> okay. no, I hear you. Um, so, I mean, it's weird, but, um, I don't, I don't use my culture as or my my ethnicity as like a or i try not to use it as as a thing you know no i don't um in what way or with what well i could be i could be making like salsa music and merengue and Ah, i see and being like oh i'm santiago ramones like (laughs) i you know and here's my shake like i hear that that's not me uh, I, I don't I don't make music like that and my my ethnicity isn't readily apparent in the music that I make understood um right and I don't want to like force that to be a thing I hear you um that makes sense because then you're kind of playing into the novelty mm-hmm. that like they want you to take yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it- yeah, you're, um, you're black. Don't you sing soulful? Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Seriously. But again, that dissonance because it's like you can, if the untrained ear will still hear someone singing and go, "She sounds black," <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, and so 
that stuff is still there and we can't just pretend that it's not. It's true. I mean, <laughs> I'm guilty of it too. I mean, when I first heard hiatus coyote, I was like, what? I don't know if you know about hiatus. I've heard a little bit. Oh my. <laughs> Miss Napalm. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, we all we all have those assumptions where it's like, oh, I mean, it's like, oh. But, <laughs> but I do my best mm-hmm. to not assume. We know yeah. what we say about assuming. But it's also kind of weird because it's you can't you don't want um why am I blinking on the, the oh, well, Porgy and Bess? You don't uh, want Porgy and Bess to be played by a white mm, cast. It's like, ugh. Yes. That's Madame really Butterfly, uncomfortable. Porgy and Bess. Yeah. When you brought up the opera earlier, those are what I, I, I initially mm-hmm. thought. Yes. Which mm-hmm. actually has been controversial because if I'm not mistaken, there was a company, a European company in the last year who did a Caucasian Porgy and Bess mm-hmm. or heavily Caucasian. I don't know if it was staged, if it was mm-hmm. staged finally, or but it was definitely... An issue. And it still is an issue. Yeah. You understand? Um, coincidentally, Porgy and Bess was the first opera I was in with Tulsa Opera in 2007 mm. as a <laughs> chorus member. So, I mean, it was really it was really interesting to me because, yes, Porgy and Bess was written by George Gershwin, mm-hmm. who obviously was not black. But um, And it's written you, in a- What? <laughs> George Gershwin? <laughs> you didn't know that. No. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't black. Oh, no. <laughs> but- it was interesting to me that it was also written in a Gullah dialect, hmm. you know. So it's a, it's like, kind of like uh, one of the one of the choruses where there's a storm is like, oh, there's somebody knocking at the door, somebody yeah. knocking at the door, you know. So yeah, you, I guess, want an all black. You want an all black cast yeah. singing that. I mean. I, it's such an edgy subject. Right. It's so edgy. But then that also goes to the Madam Butterfly. Hmm. I mean, should, should uh, Chow Chow San or should they all be, should Caucasian women be singing? Mm-hmm. You know, that's another question. I'm not saying yay or nay, mm-hmm. but yeah. that's another question that's yeah. going to come up. Seriously. And I think that as long as people treat it with respect. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, if, if the European cast that was doing Porgy and Bess, Bess uh, is respectful to to where it came from and who all did it then yeah if they could definitely do a really good performance i hope, <laughs> I hope so i certainly hope so uh, <laughs> really don't know what happened with that right <laughs> in the same way that like yeah there's a lot of white jazz musicians mm-hmm. and killer jazz musicians regardless of race yeah but like we all know where jazz came from i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously but I'm not gonna go cha- challenge Eminem to some freestyle. Hell no! Exactly. Are you crazy? I, mean, <laughs> I love hip hop, but I mean, I don't feel like I have a voice for hip hop, so I don't <laughs> I'm not any freestyles or any bars on it. Right. So, um, and then the other weird part too, like kind of acknowledging the novelty. You don't want Othello to be played by a white dude because that's a character trait mm-hmm. essential to the character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting because there are such particularly with Othello, yeah Othello of course but even with um Zabaflitte the Zabaflitte magic flute mm-hmm. Mozart I was blessed to have uh sang the role of Zarastro uh 4 years ago and there are certain lines in there you know there are certain misog- misogynistic lines in there so you're just mm-hmm. like okay you now I'm like mm-hmm. okay but then there are also references to the moors Mm -hmm. and then there are certain things which may have been lost in the original translation but sure which aren't necessarily things that i agree with but then after performing this role i kind of for a long time said i don't know if i'm comfortable singing this role again Mm -hmm. you know and so now i have to think yeah you know right and do we like do we readapt magic flute to like not do that or yeah. do we just kind of phase it out because it's seemingly racist like how do we it depends on the director yeah i mean not to i mean i i, I took your question as yeah, rhetorical yeah. but i mean <laughs> the only reason i answer it is because the, you are going to have those productions mm-hmm. where they kind of make cuts mm-hmm. or blah 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 you know what i mean so it could happen mm-hmm. it could happen there i mean particularly with operas today if it's a 
not not necessarily newly composed operas, but I mean, you'll see productions of like, uh, I think I have a copy of Norma, uh, Bellini's Norma, which is my favorite opera from 2006, but they have rifles. Well, that was set in uh, 50 BC Gaul. So I mean, you know, they make their adaptations. So <laughs> mm-hmm. you never know. Right. But yeah. But probably a better way of acknowledging it is like, because then if you start changing too much, then it starts being it like revisionist integ- history yes. sort of stuff. And that's... The integrity is lost. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe at least to begin with, you can go, this was written at a time <laughs> where Mozart didn't have that much of a cultural understanding. You know, so. But neither did most of the world. Right. So yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so this is the thing that's in there. We're going to perform it as it's written. Yeah. But it's in there. We acknowledge... It's sketchy. Yeah. Um, mm. I think any any cast that decides to do any uh, uh, Wagner huh. should probably go, let's all be very upfront and clear about this. Wagner was an anti-Semitist. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. So now that we all know that, we can, we can try and look at the art as it is. Yes. But keep that in mind. Uh-huh. That's, that's a thing. As I studied <laughs> Wagner, yeah. I asked myself, should I be, you know, I mm-hmm. joked with Dr. Eckert. I said, you know, <laughs> would you, he, he probably is rolling over in the grave that I'm studying this aria right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But these are questions I have to ask myself, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, he's not getting any royalties, obviously, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but these are questions that I ask, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah, yeah, and and separating the 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 artist from the art is a is a weird thing. I can't listen to Kanye anymore. <sighs> yeah, I haven't listened to Kanye since Flashing Lights. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't blame you. You know, I it's whether it's a publicity stunt or not. Mm-hmm. I can't disrespect those who came before me, and to mm. be as condescending with some of those comments, I don't agree with. Right. You know, so I hear you. Yeah, I hear and, you. Yeah, sometimes people do say like, oh, you got to separate the art from the artist, but it gets to a point yeah. to where you really can't. Like, yeah, maybe with Mozart, he was just like, again, ignorance mm-hmm. versus uh, malice. <laughs> uh, with yeah. <laughs> with Mozart, worse. it's like, okay, well, that's kind of was the thing and they didn't really meh. Mm-hmm. But with Wagner or something or with Kanye, who's... yeah actively saying these things mm-hmm. and kind of promoting his art in that way. It's like, I don't really know if I want to support you in that way. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. And I agree with that 100%. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm rather disappointed because you look at kind of the producer to me was amazing, especially mm-hmm. when he first hit the scene, you know, with the Jay-Z albums, you know, and the arts, that productive Kanye's producer is amazing. But yeah. I'm so disappointed. But yeah. who am I? Right. I mean, I'm just, just listen to Childish Gambino instead. Who now? Oh, Childish Gambino. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that this is America dropped. I was, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> These windows were rattling. <laughs> yeah. I was on one for like a week. I was like, don't nobody say nothing stupid to me right now. <laughs> it's ready to ride. Because <laughs> that hit, that, that, yeah. that spoke volumes, mm-hmm. you know, and that was just, the most brilliant piece of art that I feel has been presented this year in a long time, Hmm. long time. (laughs) Yes. This is America y'all. But even before (laughs) that, you know, but that was the one. Right. That's the one. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, yeah, I, we can encourage artists that do the thing well. Yeah. And just kind of, if, if everyone was just like, Kanye, Stop it. We're just not going to listen to you anymore. Mm. Like, that would shut them down real quick. Maybe. You know? <laughs> Hopefully, you know, but there's always an avenue, isn't there? There's always In a market way. for something, yeah. you know? But I hear what you're saying, but mm-hmm. someone lo- someone somewhere loves him. You know? <laughs> so it's it's real disappointing. Right. But, but that someone somewhere is going to find themselves saying something very problematic very quickly and yeah. lose some friends. I mean, <laughs> you know, but sadly, whenever I see something on the news, if I see something where such and such was fired mm. for racial comments, blah, 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 you know, 
ACLU has stepped in. I always think in the back of my head, well, what right wing extremist is going to go contact them? Mm-hmm. What uh, right wing lawyer is going to go contact them mm-hmm. and represent them? Yeah, you know, you've just given them a platform in some way, shape, or form. For yeah. every action, there's a reaction. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's fatiguing. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. Sorry. No, I mean, uh, I think there was a thing where. Um, Harvard was the Asian student, yeah, the yes. Asian student thing, yes, and the ACLU was yes. like, "We're with Harvard. You can discriminate against Asian students." Mm-hmm. Like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what are they ruling on that. I that was this, <laughs> yeah. There, there. I don't know if it's it's gone to the Supreme Court. I, I don't remember. So right, yes, yes. but it's still just like. ACLU, you were supposed to be on like the the, the everyone side. <laughs> I guess what would the argument be? Affirmative action? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And that, that is the the weird thing with affirmative action because yeah. uh, I too like I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want your handout. Right. I, let me like work my ass off and get here. Yeah, my way. But I do but. understand that there are certain companies who <laughs> purposely. Mm-hmm may not be diverse and then it's like well why aren't you hiring people mm-hmm. of color why aren't you hiring women yeah why aren't you you know so mm-hmm. and that type of thing i think that's where it may be beneficial but i'm not trying to have anybody do anything for me i got this right Trust. yeah i got and, this. <laughs> and other times like the the evidence is confused with the cause so mm, okay <laughs> so what they're referring to yeah so you know i don't have all of the facts on this so i might be putting my foot in my mouth but like <laughs> so the 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 wage gap uh with men and women mm-hmm. it it looks like the statistics say that like this is just how much men are being paid and this is how much women are being paid mm. what it doesn't say is like why mm-hmm or how or whatever, what mm-hmm. it's saying is this is the average male pay, this is the average female pay. Mm-hmm. And so to confuse that with saying, uh, oh, people are paying women less, that's not necessarily the case. It may just be that like, oh, maybe statistically women do these things more, or maybe statistically men do these things more. And so, and, and again, that's not even like a, a claim about should or whatever Mm -hmm. but if women do this more then that's what the 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 statistic is going to say and so if we ask the question Uh go instead of going why are people paying women less we should go why are women lower on average on this thing and that's it's a different question you're asking I don't know why in a different direction. I don't know, but honestly, I don't know if that is a different question mm. because I mean, I hear what you're saying in some way, shape, or form, where maybe there's a ratio or something, mm. or maybe it's a difference in position. You know mm. what I mean? But I can tell you that I one case in point. Um, I'm not going to name drop or anything, but I know of people I work with currently who are at the same pos- or in the same tier of position one being male, one being female, one being a woman, man and woman, who are in the same position, yet the man is getting over $10 more Mm. an hour in the Mm -hmm. same position, even though the woman has been there longer. Mm -hmm. And so in in that situation, but then at the same time, there may be an asterisk, maybe there's a D- sure, d- sure. difference in degrees you know right but, right but and i actually i know there's a difference in degrees but mm. i don't know if that's a factor in that right so in those instances i have to ask but then also it's not just women in general because y- you yeah statistically speaking you hear these numbers about women mm-hmm. being paid less than men mm-hmm. but also we're really talking about white women because <laughs> the numbers show that even black women make less mm-hmm you know so yeah, yeah. there's all exactly you know um but again the solution isn't necessarily oh let's just raise women's pay uh-huh. to like make that oh, i hear that equitable it's like no you, you 
you want to figure out why, why exactly, and then yes, and then accommodate those things. I agree, and I so agree. not necessarily like oh, because affirmative action, like let's just give these people handouts. Right. It's all right. Well, let's. Why are uh, people of color statistically less? You know, uh, why are we being paid less? Well, paid less or have less uh, accomplishments on their resume or whatever. And so it's like, if if you are blindly looking at resumes, mm -hmm. I think statistically, yeah, like Hispanic people are going to have less accomplishment than white people. And that probably has some underlying racial thing. Really? It, um, but like, it's just because probably because oh hispanic people and hispanic culture or wherever they come from or what it is because of uh where they grew up or how they grew up or their culture and what they value and all these different things affect that thing and so yeah a white resume might be more likely to have better looking stuff in it hmm. than a hispanic person or a black person or whatever i don't know about that though. um I mean, well, no, I think I think it's true in that, like, I'm poor. So what that means is that there are less things that were available to me. OK. Growing up. OK. So uh, maybe I didn't have the time to, like, go volunteer at a shelter or something. I understand or whatever. what you're and saying so it's now. Like, Stuff like that okay. looks really nice on a resume. Right. Or, you know, they were involved in uh, golf or uh, mm -hmm. NHS or whatever that yeah. might have been. And it's like, well, some of these organizations have entrance fees, uh, it's like being in band or going to Allstate yeah, or whatever. For like, sure. That has fees. Yeah. And so, like, I didn't have that growing up. Right. So that doesn't show up on my thing because right. I wasn't able to do that. Right. Um, and so because of the, the poor thing, but I also happen to be Hispanic, mm -hmm. my accomplishments are not going to be equal to someone uh, with the someone, means and who yeah, has someone the capability. With the means. I hear that. Yeah. But there's also, yes, I agree with that. But I mean, even I'm looking at my life right now mm -hmm. and yes, I agree with that. If mm -hmm. you have the means, yeah, it's easy for such and such to go take gymnastics it's easy for mm -hmm. some you know but i mean yeah economics definitely play a role in that mm -hmm. but it goes back to my earlier point where you got to use your resources mm -hmm. and you have to figure out that way you know when i'm i'm blessed that my parents worked so hard you know and they put me and my younger sisters through so much they put my younger sisters through catholic school mm -hmm. you know um i did karate from like third to fourth grade and right after you yeah. know so they did that they paid for that mm -hmm. um i but, wish i could have you know uh, yeah. but not necessarily that they had the money right you know what i'm saying but they worked hard and they wanted to see their children grow that's why they left jamaica that's why they came here mm -hmm. you know i'm not saying i understand it is not always like that because we went through struggles too right you understand but mm -hmm. i basically Outside of that, they always just kind of try to involve me as much as possible, mm -hmm. you know, or tried to get me off the couch as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I was in JROTC in high school. Mm. So I did a lot of that. You know, I, I did a lot of outdoor things there. I, I was still fat, but, you know, I did that. <laughs> but, you know, I did some JROTC things. I was in Explorers BSA. So I have that under my belt. But something else, my mom, she was always trying to get me to go out and do certification. Mm. So I, I mean, when I was like a junior or a senior in high school, she had me go to the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And I would just take classes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I learned how to, I learned basic plumbing and carpentry there and I got a mm -hmm. certification, you know? So my parents were always encouraging right. of that, but it doesn't necessarily mean, mean that we had the money. They didn't have the money to pay for this, that, and send me mm -hmm. to camp or something like right. that. You know what I'm saying? But not that I've wanted to go to camp. Well, I went to, <laughs> in RTC, I went to summer camp for one summer because right. I wanted to, but... <laughs> but even so, I'm like, I have those little things to put on my resume. Uh, I, not necessarily the high school certifications anymore. But, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of set the tone for me mm -hmm. in college, you mm -hmm. know. So I just yeah, kind yeah. of used those right. outlets or those opportunities I have. And mm -hmm. that's why I guess I have these things, those certifications. Right, right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
But I do think, and it's eventually makes its way back to like free will. Uh-huh. Um, dun, dun, in the uh, <laughs> so your your parents knew that hustle. Huh, yeah. Um, still hustling. Right. Sixties <laughs> <laughs> and still hustling. Right. About to. But like, can you imagine? You know, someone else, same thing, coming uh, overseas from somewhere else. But like maybe they don't speak English as well, and so mm. they don't know how to like, mm. and they don't know that this is an option. Mm. They don't know that like, oh, if you go to this thing, they do this thing for free, yeah. and you can actually do that, or like this charity thing, this you know program, yeah, does a thing. And if you if you don't know, those options aren't available. It's to true. You. It's true. And so, uh, like going to free will, it's that. If you don't know that that's an option, then how are you able to make that choice? You're not. Right? Yeah. Right. And so, like, some. I know that was rhetorical again. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, some, some kid growing up in the ghetto mm -hmm. and the gang life is all that they know, how the heck are they going to know? It's like, no, actually, if you, like, go to school, get good grades, you can get a full ride scholarship to college and, like, you'll be out of here. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. But like if all of their environment is telling them like, no, you got to be out here selling your drugs, kicking ass, killing people, whatever, whatever that might be. They don't know that there's a life outside of that. Well, it's not just there either. Sometimes it's within those schools. Yeah. It's within, too. it's their teachers, yeah. you know, who don't encourage this. Like I said, I didn't, when I was in high school, I was in a math and science honors program. Mm. I didn't do particularly well. I did not, <laughs> you know, but I thought I had this mentality that when I graduate, I'm going to go into computer science. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but uh, I knew that I loved computers and I wanted to go into computer science. But I was... I really can remember a time, even though I didn't do great in high school. I did, I did, mm -hmm. you know, as I progressed in high school, I didn't really care about academics anymore. You know, in junior high, elementary, I didn't have mm. to try. Mm. But as I grew older, I didn't, I didn't really have the encouragement. I didn't have the support, mm -hmm. you know, the academic support. I just kind of, and I just kind of bumbled around in high school for a mm. little bit academically. You right. know, it wasn't until like my junior year where I really kind of got it together. My sophomore year was academically terrible, <laughs> but but I I can I I can remember a time being encouraged to leave the program hmm. because my grades weren't what they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I finished the program. Mm -hmm. You know, but. If you're not if you're not being encouraged into other avenues, if you're not mm -hmm. being looked at, if you're not able to address those things, then mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. So yeah. it may be it's product of your environment, but it's also you know product of the system. Yeah. You know, because the system, look, point blank, civil rights, voting rights, fifty years ago, mm -hmm. just over fifty years ago. Yeah. Okay. I'm. It's not lost on me that this our system was not set up with me in mind as a person. I was mm -hmm. three fifths of a person. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even the beginning. I wasn't even a person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was property. Right. So when folks love to refer to the quote unquote founding fathers, I have to remind them, well, your founding fathers enslaved my people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get what you're saying, life, love and pursuit, but that goes back to the earlier discussion. Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not chastising anyone today for that, right. but know that I recognize yeah. it know mm -hmm. that i see it yeah okay so now let's build upon that foundation do you see it too mm -hmm. how are you gonna work this out right there it is yeah and that's, that's it yeah if we acknowledge that this is a problem in the system yeah and go hey maybe if we actually tried to do something <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> uh we can actually update maybe <laughs> Maybe, but it, it goes back to the old cliche saying, you know, you, you, you got to know your history to know where you're going, mm -hmm. right? You got to know where you've been to know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> Troy, this has been great. Yes, thank you, Santiago. This is, I hope I haven't droned on too much. Oh I'm, no, this is great. Thoughts all over the place. You know? <laughs> uh, we can slowly making more people more woke <laughs> <laughs> you know you want to listen to something wake up and live by bob marley and the whalers wake up and live mm. there no the survival album bob marley and the whalers 1979 i don't think there's more 
a more applicable album in these times <laughs> right now. Just so much trouble in the world. Another song. Anyway. <laughs> Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Uh, so where can we find you in your things? Okay. Plug well, your stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you can find me at www.troyanthonysmall.com. That is www.troyanthonysmall.com. You can also find me on Twitter. The handle is it's just Troy 14. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram as Troy Anthony Small, or you can find my music at Reverb Nation, Troy Anthony Small for the classical stuff. Now, if you want me as a singer-songwriter, I'm also on Reverb Nation as Troy Small. Just Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Several places. Yeah. Why are you gonna say all that white, man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, was that was that wrong? I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I do voices. I'm not. I'm not making fun of anyone. I do different characters. So anyway, <laughs> and obviously no, yes. no ill no love, uh, no disrespect. Please uh, <laughs> don't don't come find me. <laughs> it's love. So, <laughs> I'm Santiago Ramones, and I'm Troy Anthony Small. You can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. Uh, you can download or pay for my music. And you can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, or on YouTube, or on my website itself. And you can leave comments, leave reviews, and uh, let us know if you agreed or disagreed or any further points that could be made. Uh, be nice. Yeah, be nice, always. Um, I always end my podcast with my three things. Those three things uh, shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails, it's going to be okay, I might be wrong.